What is up, the Zombie Talk 123 here. Yet another Oakland Athletics pitcher has been dealt this year. We've seen them deal four pitchers this year. One reliever, or two relievers, excuse me, and two starters. Both, or all of them, have been under the age of 30, but three of them have been really young studs in this organization for the past few years. Um, and you look at guys like Gio Gonzalez, Trevor Cahill, and now Andrew Bailey. He has been dealt to the Boston Red Sox. There's no team in baseball, in my opinion, that has had the need for closing and has the money and the resources to go out and get a closer than the Boston Red Sox. After Jonathan Papelbon left, they've really needed to fill that void. You see teams, the Phillies, they get better with getting Jonathan Papelbon, but they paid a lot of money. The market for closers, there's been so many closer options out there that Andrew Bailey's value might not be as high. But in my opinion, in some ways, it could be higher because of the fact he's 27 years old. He's going to be a lot cheaper option for some of these teams than a guy like Jonathan Papelbon or Ryan Madsen. So why wouldn't you want to trade a few minor leaguers for Andrew Bailey? The only risk is that he's very injury prone. He's been hurt the past few years. You know, he had Tommy John surgery a few years ago. He was hurt in 2010. Uh, this year, he had a minor scar tissue injury. Uh, he pitched in about 42 innings and still managed to close 20-plus games. So if he can stay healthy for the Boston Red Sox, he's a really good, solid closing option for them. So you look at the Red Sox after they dealt for Mark Melancon of the Astros. They dealt away Jed Lowry, kind of an expendable prospect type major league player that played some uh, very good baseball last year um, and, and got hot for a while and put up some good numbers. But really with Marco Scudero, with uh, Jose Iglesias, and with other prospects and major league ready players, he's he definitely was expendable. For So for dealing for Mark Melancon, you know, a mentally tough closer, he could have been a very solid closer with the Red Sox. Do I think that he is good enough, though, to be a full-time closer with the Red Sox and is ready for that. I think the Red Sox had the feeling that they need to go out and get a guy to solidify this bullpen. If Daniel Bard is, in fact, moving to the starting rotation, which for now it seems even more likely that he is, considering that they now have an eighth and ninth inning guys. Remember, they still have Bobby Jenks um, and some other of their you know built-in relievers that they can afford to give up some other expendable prospects to get a closer that they need. So in this deal, they give up uh, Josh Reddick, a very solid major league ready outfield. You know, he was in the outfield last year for them a little bit. Uh, he, he put up some solid numbers. He batted around 280. He hit a few home runs here and there. He had some RBIs. And he played in 87 games for them in 2011. So, really, you know, the Athletics, you know, they've lost Josh Willingham, if you look in left field. They've lost David Jesus in right field, who, you know, they traded for, I believe it was last year. Um, and so you look at this, and, and you remember, Coco Crisp is a free agent, and he probably won't return either. So this is a total rebuilding of a team like the Oakland Athletics, who have been rebuilt so many times. It seems like they're always rebuilding. Billy Bean, though, has done a really good job with this team, trying to keep them competitive with the low payroll. But... They have gotten a really solid Major League Ready player in Josh Reddick here. Played for the Red Sox and will now be sent to Oakland Athletics to play for them in 2012. Along with Josh Reddick, the Oakland Athletics will also receive uh, two other players in return for Josh Reddick and also, though, Mike Sweeney, who's a left-handed uh, batter, fits in with the Boston Red Sox very well. His left-handed um, has a really nice swing for Fenway Park with the short por porches and right. So, And he does really well against right-handed pitchers. So he's definitely a nice add, a fourth outfield bench bat um, type add for the Red Sox. So they're getting some depth there that they're losing by giving away Josh Reddick. Now I'd expect the Red Sox to still be in the market for a right fielder, more likely through trade, because right now the market for right field um, it just really isn't there. Other than a Cody Ross type player, I, I don't know who else the Boston Red Sox would go for in the free agency. So I think the Red Sox, though, are more looking at pitching than anything. Now that they have the relief that they have down, um, they can afford a player. The money they saved on, you know, not spending the money on a closer, they saved that money um, instead of spending like $12 million a year on a guy like Josh Papelbon. They get a guy like Andrew Bailey, who is, is very cheap compared to those pitchers. And then you save some money, and maybe you're able to go out a guy like uh, Edwin Jackson, Hiroki uh, Kuroda they've been interested in. Um, Joe Saunders, I think, could be a possible option there. So, you know, they have a lot of options on the table. The free agency for pitchers is not terrible this year compared to the depth in outfield. They were in on Carlos Belchan, uh, but he was just seemed like a perfect fit for the Cardinals pretty much the whole time. So they were not able to uh, sign Beltran, and now they probably will look uh, via trade for right field options. 
But back to the Oakland A's, who else they will receive in this deal? They, you know, number one, the big part was Josh Reddick. I think that definitely made this deal happen. But they also received Miles Head, uh, first baseman, who, you know, first baseman-wise, they've added some first baseman in the past in some deals, but they really just haven't found that first baseman that can actually stay. You know, Derek Barton was a huge part of that Dan Heron trade. He was supposed to be in the next, you know, huge hitter, um, and he has not panned out at all. You know, and I believe they traded uh, for Brandon Allen. It was he was a first baseman for the Diamondbacks, um, and I believe they traded for a Diamondbacks first baseman to add some depth there too. But he hasn't worked out so far. So they trade for a first baseman. He had 22 home runs the, uh, last year and had a pretty good amount of RBIs and you know over 100 games in the minors last year. But he's only made it to Class A. He hasn't made it past that. So we'll see if the Oakland A's can develop him further. Um, and then they also get a really solid pitcher there too from the Boston Red Sox. To complete the deal, um, sending Andrew Bailey and Mike Sweeney to Boston for now Josh Reddick, who I think will be a very solid major league player um, in Oakland too, right field option there. Um, and then you get Miles Head, who adds some first baseman depth. And if you remember, um, Oakland tried to add some of that depth um, from the Red Sox earlier, actually. Last year, they tried to get Lars Anderson. They were uh, for Rich Harden, I believe, but the Red Sox pulled out of it because of injury issues. So the Red Sox go for Andrew Bailey, who also is very injury prone, uh, but they're willing to offer maybe a less um, touted prospect in Miles Head uh, rather than giving a guy like Lars Anderson. Um, so they give away Raul Acantara, a 19-year-old. He had a 2.20 ERA, had a great strikeout-to-walk ratio. He had like 50 strikeouts and just over 10 walks. Um, you know, his batters against him had a really low uh, batting average. So you're looking at a guy who could definitely develop into a really good pitcher. He has some high ceiling there. So overall, this deal is a really solid one for both teams. I can see the Athletics waiting until um, next year to trade Andrew Bailey. But since he is injury prone, you might not want to risk it. The Red Sox are in need of a young closer, um, cost controlled, and, and really low price closer in Andrew Bailey, who has a lot of talent, was rookie of the year, has been an all-star. And for the Athletics, you know, they're giving up a lot of talent here, uh, but they're getting some solid um, major league ready talent in Josh Reddick, and then they're getting two prospects who they can hopefully develop. And, you know, this has been a pretty good offseason. you got a really good haul, and they're totally um, restocking their minor league system at this point. Again, I really like the move on both sides. Um, right now, I think it could be called a tie, but in the future, the Oakland Athletics might win this deal, getting a really solid major leaguer in Josh Reddick. And then if Alcantara can develop into a really good pitcher, I think they could long-term win this deal. But for right now, Red Sox are looking a lot better with Andrew Bailey there. Thanks for watching. This is MLB Talk 1-2-3.